गुड मॉर्निंग मेंबर्स नाउ एम गोइंग टू रिकॉर्ड अ स्पेसिफिक वीडियो फॉर यू ऑन द रीसेंट एग्जाम केस स्टडी ऑन एफ सी एफ ई एंड एफ सी एफ एफ वैल्यूएशन दिट्स वॉज अगेन केस स्टडी विच इज आज टू मेनी मेंबर्स Initially, the exact data was not available with us, many of us, because there were many figures available in the question. But now, the exact information, whatever I have got, is available with me, along with the options, and options are matching with the answer. So, obviously, now we can make a video on that, so that you get a conceptual clarity on the set. But because because before I should say before going further, let's try to discuss or let's try to revise the concept of FCFE and FCFF to understand what is given over there. Because most of the members, even if the answer of this question is available now in some of the groups or whatsoever, but still I keep on getting the doubts because why this item is added, why this item is deducted, and all. so if you want the conceptual clarity on all those points let's try to revise first the fcfe and fcf what does that means fcfe free cash flow to equity means whatever the incomes whatever the i should say not incomes but the cash flows those are available only for the equity only for the equity after payment to even debt and preference shares as in this question the preference shares issuance and preference share dividend was also there so maximum situations or in maximum situations the preference shares are to be construed in similar manner as the debt is there because preference shares are also having the fixed rate of dividend and generally it is considered as that is why it is considered as uh, or for calculation purpose it is considered as debts so if the fcf is there then after payment to even the debt providers after payment even to preference shares whatever is left with us that is only for equity providers the cash flow is left is called the fcfe and when we have to calculate the fcff then obviously the free cash flow to firm means the inflow or cash flow that is there for equity and debt both that means the payments regarding these two should not be reduced while calculation of fc ff and as i have told you the preference shares is to be construed the preference dividend is to be construed similar to the debts so then if this logic is clear then this because this question becomes very easy because whenever when this question came in exam the major point the members struck in was the treatment of issuance of reference shares and treatment of issuance of or uh, preference dividend payments then the third major point in this question or different point was the treatment of depreciation because it was given in the question that the depreciation is 50000 as per uh, income tax as per companies act depreciation is 60000 so what is the impact of the same on fcf fee sir the impacts can be taken in so many different manners if you have taken in some different manner you can take what i'll suggest you just try to concentrate on the accounting standard number 22 or indias 12 that basically deals with the deferred tax calculations if i ask you that as per accounting if you are asking for a depreciation of 60000 and as per income tax they only allow you 50000 then obviously they have disallowed you the depreciation of 10000 right now but as we all know that amount of depreciation that is allowable under income tax and accounting will be exactly same that is the cost so if income tax authorities have disallowed right now the 10000 claim on depreciation then in the upcoming years they are obviously going to allow us as the amount and then whenever they will allow they are going to reduce our taxes because they are going to give us higher claim of depreciation so if the taxes will be reduced in future then i am going to get in recent future i am going to get some benefit if i am going to get some benefit then obviously this will increase my 
asset you have to create a deferred tax asset on the same how to create sir whatever that difference is there allowability difference multiplied by tax rate that is 10,000 is a difference into tax rate of 30 percent you can create a deferred tax asset on the same this is one way the other way around can be you can obviously what the depression you have charged or tax saving on that you can take the vice versa effects on the same but i am not going into that because otherwise you will get confused if you want that concept clarity the numbers uh, my numbers are flashing on the screen you can call me and i'll i can explain it to you on on call no problem at all but try to concentrate on dta dtl concept whenever this depreciation concept will be there this will give you the correct answer always this duty detail concept is again of different uh, phase of life with this uh, from accounting but this will give you the correct answer in a straightforward manner and you, there will be no need of reading so much or there will be no need of cramming this particular point now these three points are there one is the treatment of preferences second one is the treatment of uh, this depreciation and the third point is there based on the cash generally the cash increase is not considered in fcfe and it should be considered in fcff because that is the free cash allow not allowed to equity shareholders but that is only available for the firm so how to treat that let's try to understand let's i'm going to show you the question first the question is this FCFE without working capital and capex as given in the question but this is FCFE already is given so 52,000 depreciation as per companies act 60,000 depreciation as per income tax is 50,000 obviously 3,000 DTAA therefore tax asset should be created tax rate is 30 percent 10,000 into 30 percent is 3,000 of DTA should be created then preference dividend paid 10,000 is there then equity dividend paid 5,000 is there equity dividend obviously not relevant interest on short term loan 10,000 interest on debentures 20,000 should if the FCFE is there then obviously these are already deducted from there so we have no need to discuss interest right now because how to calculate FCFE the income then amount related to uh, the tax should be eliminated the amount related to debt and uh, preference shares relation always should be reduced or added then only this FCFE is there only two effects are not there the working capital effect is not there and capex effect not that is what we have to take care of then issue of preference capital the issue of equity capital is not relevant debenture redemption is there 75 and working capital increase in debtors increase in cash again will not be considered while fcfe but will be added while calculation of fc ff interest in, in increase in creditors increase in cash credit limit now this is again the last point in this question what do we understand by cash credit limit or overdraft limit if say for example i have taken a limit of two crores from a bank cc limit i have taken so does that mean that i have taken a loan of two lakh two crores might be or whenever i use that limit then only i have to incur the interest and then only the loan is going to be taken the answer is the second one sir if you have taken a limit or you have increased the limit of that particular cc uh, cash credit then this does not bring any cash to any entity this is only a documented thing that now you can take higher amount of loan whenever is required so limit increment will never give you any cash this is the next part how to calculate fcff and fcf in this case let's pay attention here fcf without working capital and capex as given in question is 52000 and increase in working capex is not given in question so whatever the increase all other effects question all already saying that in fcfe we have already taken so what we are going to consider is the increase in working capital so i have made a working note for you increase in debtors working capital means current assets minus current liabilities so increase in debtors is current asset increase in creditors is twenty thousand. so i am writing it in minus because obviously working capital calculations uh, the creditors or liability should be reduced then cc limit no effect the increase in current assets is 3000 that is dta already discussed so how much is the net increase in working capital sometimes members get struck in debtors add honge debt creditors reduce honge and all 
डोंट ट्राई टू मग अप दो थिंग्स ऑलवेज ट्राई टू फर्स्ट कैलकुलेट द वर्किंग कैपिटल and if the working capital is increased that means higher infusion of funds is required in the business if and the cash flows or equity or form will be reduced by that amount if the working capital is decreased then the funds are withdrawn so cash flows or the equity and uh, form is going to be increased by that so don't try to read individual items while in working capital always try to calculate the working capital first if it is increased the cash flows are infused in the business FCFE will reduce and vice versa is also true. So here the net increase in working capital is 33,000. So if the working capital is increased by 33,000 of it, the cash flow for equity is reduced and the correct FCFE is 19,000. This is it. Simple question. Nothing to worry. Second part of this question is you, have, you were asked to calculate the FCFE. So now the problem starts because many of the members have asked me a query that if you see I have in reduced the issue of preference shares over here. Generally, members ask the query that sir, issue of preference shares should be added because that will bring cash to entity. Very true. Then why you have reduced, sir? I'll give you the logic. Just wait for next two minutes only. So here, let's try to calculate the FCFF. Now, already we are having the free cash flow to equity. That means we are having the income of equity or inflow for equity now i want the income or inflow for the equity plus debt and preference shareholders equity plus debt and preference shareholders now let's try to concentrate so if there was a i have given you this story at the time of teaching the fcfe and fcff also but pay little attention again if there were three persons who combinedly robbed a bank and got thousand rupees from there now they want to split this uh, money and if i ask you that who are the owners of this thousand rupees obviously it's a three persons mr a mr b and mr c correct say for example i have reduced mr a's share as 200 from there how much amount is left the answer is 800 correct now who are the owners of this 800 obviously b and c so if i have paid the amount to b also then say for example i have paid 500 to him then i'm left with 300 rupees who is the owner of this fund obviously sir a so if the funds available to a is available and you want to reach the funds available for three persons then how to do that obviously whatever the effects or whatever the amounts are reduced that belongs to these two persons should be added back correct the effect if i ask you with the mathematical effect plus minus then obviously you will add 500 whatever is paid to be you will add 200 and you will be left with 1000 so obviously if i ask you then whatever the effects you have given while calculation for the amount for a if you want to reach till the funds for all of the three you have to nullify those effects or you have to give the opposite effect for nullifying that effect so if you have reduced rupees 500 then you have to add it back correct now try to understand we are given with the fc fe pay full attention as 52000 we will reduce the working capital as 33000 and we will add this is hopefully clear this is hopefully clear that is going to be reduced for fcfe and fcff both now this is the important point that cash will be available for equity uh, sorry for the firm obviously in cash flow for the firm this is not available for equity shareholders increase in cash will be available for firm so i'm going to add it back then these three four amounts are there let's try to concentrate on them the question is over each one by one first in question it was given that the interest on loans will be 10,000 and 20,000 now if i ask you while calculation of fcfe will the interest on loans will already be reduced the answer is yes sir then only the EBT will be there. Then the tax of on that EBT will be there. Then only the EAT will be there. 
then after that the concept of hcfe will start so if i want to nullify the effect of those interest or those related to debt providers then i have to obviously add them back simple sir so i'll add them back but why to add them back after tax because this was if the income is going to be increased then the tax is also going to be paid on them so tax effect has to be taken and i have add i have added them both 20 plus 10 30000 minus tax of 30% you will add 21000 why to add because previously those were reduced while calculation of this amount 52000 when they have arrived this they have reduced this then now i am nullifying the effect by adding by giving the opposite effect try to concentrate on this so hopefully this amount is done then dividend on preferences again the same point when the fcfe is calculated i have already told you this is similar to interest but the only difference is that preference dividend is not having any tax effect because this is not a tax deductible item so previously while calculation of fcfe we might have reduced the amount related to dividend paid to preference shareholders because that is also similar to the debt providers so previously when they were reduced now if i want to nullify the effect i have to add them up as simple the interest is there the preference dividend is there now the dividend or oh, sorry redemption of debentures if i have redeemed the debentures then i have made some outflow so while calculation of fcfe i might have reduced that correct sir so now if i want to nullify the effect free cash flow available for the firm or for the debt providers i have to add them up the nullifying effect now the last part where the, i don't know why the members were struck because they don't generally they generally don't try to read this point rather cramming so here try to concentrate on the last part then the question is over issue of preference shares issue of preference shares is exactly similar to issue of debt so while calculation of fcfe i might have added that because the cash flow is coming for equity obviously so if i added that now i want to nullify the effect of the same then what should i do you have given me the answer we have to reduce that so there is no doubt the only point that you should remember is that cash flow increase or cash increase is only available to the firm and not available to the equity because there is only consideration of non-cash increase in working capital while calculation of free cash flow to the equity so if you will do these nullifying effects to calculate the fcff then you will be left with 1 lakh 5000 these both answers 19000 and 105000 are correct answers and these were also available in the options as per the information available with me that i have received from the members so this was again a very important question please try to revise this because these days this is coming on a very often basis so this is for the day the proper conceptual clarity first of all always go through the sessions completely because then only these type of questions will be very easy for you if there will be one or two different points will be there then i am there for them i'll make a different or new video on them if the new question will be there but if you have not done the proper concepts then these days as the exam is getting tougher and tougher it is not possible to crack this 60 marks hurdle if details batches are required if details explanations are required any information any demo session is required then contact on the number flashing on the screen that's it for the day have a good day happy new year also